Let's look at this nice integral from the math magazine. So in particular, it's the integral from zero to infinity of two plus x plus a times the natural log of x over x plus b. And our goal here is not just to evaluate the integral, but find all the values of a and b where this integral converges, and then, well, when it converges, we'll find the value of the integral. Okay, so what's kind of nice about this is it doesn't actually involve a ton of tricks. We're simply gonna use the fundamental theorem of calculus. That is, we'll take the antiderivative and, well, find the limit of it as it approaches infinity and zero from above. Okay, so let's jump right into that. So let's let capital F of X be an antiderivative of, and I'll just put dot, dot, dot here to be of, well, that function that is inside of our integral. But well, what does that tell us? Well, immediately no, we know that our goal is now equal to the limit as X goes to infinity of F of X minus the limit as X goes to zero from above of F of X. Notice that this is an improper integral on both sides of this. Improper on the infinite side, kind of for obvious reasons. And then zero is a discontinuity of the natural log. So it's an improper integral on that side as well. Okay, so now let's get into evaluating this integral. So let's say we've got f of x, like I said, it's gonna be an antiderivative. So let's first write it like this. We can take this two and integrate that out to two x. And then we'll have plus the integral from, well, not from anything because it's a antiderivative, the integral of x plus a times the natural log of x dx minus the integral of x plus a times the natural log of x plus b dx. Where of course what I did here is I used the fact that a logarithm of a quotient is a difference of logarithms. Okay, so now what I wanna do is use integration by parts on each of these integrals. So on the first integral and the second integral. And the approach we're using here is written in the solutions that you can find in this issue. But what I like about it is in the round of integration by parts that we'll do, you'll see that when we take our quote unquote DV term, we'll take maybe not the obvious antiderivative in order to pick up the V term. So anyway, let's see what I mean by that. So let's first work on this one that I have in a blue underline. And here what I'll do is I'll set u equal to the natural log of x, x, which of course means that du is equal to one over x dx. And then dv will be equal to x plus a dx. And now the clever antiderivative we'll take for dv will be the following. We'll take v to be equal to x over two times x plus two a. So that's definitely an antiderivative of dv. So now let's use our integration by parts formula. We'll recall it over here. The integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. So maybe bringing this down, we have the integral of x plus a times the natural log of x dx will be equal to u times v. So that's x over two times x plus two a times the natural log of x minus the integral of v du. So I can bring this half out front, observe that the x in the denominator and the x in the numerator cancel, and we're left with x plus two a dx. But now finishing this whole thing off, we have x over two times x plus two a times the natural log of x minus a quarter x squared, and then let's see, minus a times x. So that's what we'll take for an antiderivative of this blue underline. Okay, so now what I wanna do is perhaps maybe bring this up and write it in place of, well, the integral that we just took the antiderivative of, and then move on to the magenta underlined integral. Okay, I just moved up the calculation we just did, and now we're gonna repeat the process of integration by parts on that magenta underlined integral. 
And like we did before, we're gonna use a creative choice of our antiderivative for the integration by parts part. Okay, so we'll take u to be equal to the natural log of x plus b. That means that du will be equal to one over x plus b dx, kind of obviously. Now we'll take dv to be equal to x plus a dx. And then for our antiderivative, in this case, we'll take the following. We'll take v to be equal to x plus b over two times x plus a, or sorry, plus two a minus b. Then I'm just gonna move that all over to there. Now, you can check that if you were to multiply that out and take the derivative, you end up with x plus a. You can kind of see it here because you get an x times 2a over 2. That's going to be ax. The derivative of that is a. And then, well, let's see. All of the rest of the x terms are x times minus b and x times b, but those are going to cancel. So that means the coefficient of x over here on the right-hand side is most definitely a, which is what we need it to be. Okay, so now let's bring this down just like we did before. So x plus a, natural log of x plus b, dx, and now applying our integration by parts formula. So let's see, we'll have x plus b, x plus 2a minus b over 2 times the natural log of x plus b for our u times v part. And then we'll have minus the integral of v du. So let's see. The antiderivative we chose has the nice effect that it cancels out this x plus b in the denominator. So we have minus 1 half and then the integral of x plus 2a minus b dx. Now, of course, we can bring all of that down. And let's see, it's a bit of a mouthful right now, but we've got this term right here that's attached to the natural log of x plus b. And then after that, we're going to have minus a quarter x squared. And then after that, uh, let's see, minus a times x. And then finally, after that, it will be plus b times x. Okay, nice. Oh, and I got that wrong. That's plus b over 2 times x. And now I'd like to observe that when I push that up into the integral that it is taking the place of, this 1 quarter x squared term will get canceled with this 1 quarter x squared term, and this minus ax term will get canceled with that minus ax term. So that means I don't need to write those. So now I'll bring everything to the top, but I'll leave those off because those cancel. Okay, so now here's where we left off. And now I'd like to look at these terms kind of one at a time. So this part right here is going to multiply out to x squared plus 2ax over 2. So we'll use that for a bit of a simplification step. And then this one over here will multiply out to x squared plus 2ax. And then after that, we'll have minus b squared plus 2ab, and then that's all over 2. And then one last little simplification we're going to do, or maybe it's not a simplification, but a trick that will help our calculation, is to rewrite this natural log of x plus b term as the natural log of x minus the natural log of x over x plus b. So by logarithm rules, that will combine together to what we have just above. So that's no worries. Okay, so now let's start to do a bit of simplification. So now notice that this x squared 2ax over 2 and this x squared 2ax over 2 are both attacking a natural log term. This natural log term here and this natural log of x term here. So that means we're going to get some simplification, and in the end, the only thing multiplying into the natural log of x term will be this right here, this b squared, and then minus 2ab, or minus b squared plus 2ab, depending on how you write it. Okay, so now bringing some stuff down and making that simplification, we have 2x minus b over 2 times x from this first bit. And then, like I said, the stuff hitting natural log of x will be b 
times b minus 2ab. Notice all that's attached to a minus sign, that's why the sign changed, over 2 times the natural log of x. And that cancels out this term right here in totality. Okay, and then like I said, that's gonna cancel out with this bit right here multiplying into the natural log of x, leaving us with the natural log of x term that we have. Okay, and then we have all of that stuff that was still there multiplied into the natural log of x over x plus b, but this minus sign and this minus sign will cancel. So we'll have x plus b over x plus 2a minus b all over 2 times the natural log of x over x plus b. But I'm actually going to write that as the natural log of 1 minus b over x plus b. I think it's pretty clear that we could write it like that. And now I want to go over here and recall something, and that is the series expansion of a certain natural log. So the log of 1 minus u can be rewritten as minus u minus 1 half u squared minus 1 third u cubed minus 1 quarter u to the fourth and so on and so forth. So now we can apply that formula to this over here. We have 1 minus b over x plus b. This will be our u in that case. Okay, so let's write that out. So let's see, we'll have 2x minus b over 2 times x. That's not going anywhere. And then we have plus b times b minus 2ab all over 2 times the natural log of x. And then again, we've got this term that isn't going anywhere just yet. x plus b, x plus 2a minus b all over 2. And then that series expansion with this choice of u like we talked about over there. Notice that all of these will have a minus sign. So I'll take that minus sign and I'll just bring it right out here. Okay, so let's see. The first one will be just quote unquote u. So that'll be b over x plus a. And then we'll have plus b squared over two times x plus b quantity squared. And I should have said this was x plus b. And then it'll be plus b cubed over three times x plus b cubed. And then plus dot, dot, dot. But the important thing is, is that plus dot, 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 as x tends towards infinity, will get canceled out because we'll have a cubic thing in the denominator or higher and a quadratic thing in the numerator. So when I rewrite it, I'll just write it as a box, keeping in mind that that box will go to zero as we let x go to infinity. Okay, so let's make that maybe simplifying step. So we'll have this 2x minus b over 2 times x, and then, well, all of this that's still going on over 2 times natural log of x. And then multiplying that through, we'll have minus, let's see, b over 2 times x plus 2a minus b. That's from this first term. And then the second term will be minus b squared, and then times x plus 2a minus b over x plus b, and then plus, and I'm just gonna put like an orange square here, keeping in mind that this orange square will approach zero as x approaches infinity, which is of course something that we're gonna do over here in the end game. Okay, nice. So now, well, what can we do from there? Notice we've got some x terms over here. We've got some x terms over here. So perhaps we should combine those together. And then we also have a linear polynomial here in the numerator and the denominator. So we could simplify that as well with like polynomial division. So let's see. Uh, putting those things together and making that simplification will have the following. So these x terms and these x terms will combine together to give us 2 minus b times x. So again, that's from this x right here and from this x right here. I think that's pretty clear to see. We've got b over 2 there and b over 2 there. And in this natural log term, we can just bring down b times b minus 2a. That should just be a. It had an a, b the whole time, but that was my bad. Up there it was right. 
and then all over two times the natural log of x. And then we'll have a number from the constant term here. So that number for us will be minus b over two times 2a minus b. Okay, good. And then let's see, we can do, like I said, polynomial division on that. I could perhaps factor out a b squared over four. You might say, well, where did the four come from? Well, we've got a two here, we've got a two here, so that's where the four came from. And then after doing that, polynomial long division will end up giving us one minus two times a minus b over x plus b. And then again, I'll just put plus this orange box to mean that thing goes to zero as our x tends towards infinity. Okay, so now let's see what happens to the rest of these things as x tends towards infinity. Well, this one will go to infinity kind of clearly. The natural log grows infinitely as well. This term over here will go to minus b squared over four. And then this term right here is just a constant, which means we have a non-infinite limit if and only if the coefficient of x and the coefficient of natural log of x are both equal to zero. But notice that immediately implies that b is equal to two to zero this out and that a is equal to one. But notice if b is equal to two and a is equal to one, then that means that, well, like I said, this will cancel out, this will cancel out, uh, this will cancel out, and we're simply left with this term right here, which will become minus one. And of course, that's in the infinite limit. We still need to check out what's going on near zero. But that being said, I can go ahead and take this infinite limit and just replace it with minus one. And then in order to find out what's going on when b is two and a is one, I can just plug that into this version of our function that we have right here. Or I could even go further up to the top. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll start my next board with this equation and plug in a equals one and b equals two. All right, so this was our function, which was our antiderivative. And now let's plug in a equals one and b equals two, which we saw were the necessary and sufficient conditions for our integral to converge. So let's see, that's gonna give us f of x equals what? So let's see, we'll have two x minus x, so that's gonna be x. And then we'll have plus, let's see, x over two, and then x plus four. So x over two, like I said, times x plus four natural log of x. And then we'll have minus x plus two, and then times an x, and that's because this term right here will cancel out over two, and then the natural log of x plus two. So we're left with something like that. And I guess we could most definitely do some simplification here, but I don't, but I don't think it's super necessary. And that's because it's pretty clear that if we let x approach zero, this term right here will approach zero. This term right here will approach zero times two over two times the natural log of two, which will also approach zero. This term right here is of course like an indeterminate form, but it's pretty easy to show via L'Hopital's rule or a number of other ways that this will also approach zero as x is approaching zero from above. So that means in the end, this term will not contribute to the value of our integral, which means the value of this integral is in fact simply minus one occurring, like we said before, when a is one and b is two, and that's the only place that it converges. And that's a good place to stop.